Today's episode has a big new report on the Tesla Cybercab. Hippie protesters leave behind dangerous trash that Riven steals. Elon talks about a dull business, and Europe gets a piece of ass. Tesla is stepping up its efforts to start testing the robo-taxi service and the Optimus humanoid robot in real life. Recently, the company posted a job opening for a C++ software engineer specializing in teleoperation for these projects. The person in this role will be working on developing systems that allow remote control of the Cybercab and the Optimus robot using virtual reality setups that let operators do complex tasks remotely. Tesla writes that our remote operators are transported into the device's world using a state-of-the-art VR rig that lets them do complex and intricate tasks remotely. You will drive requirements, make choices, and work with hardware teams. Integrate the tools for this custom teleoperation system. Teleoperation of Optimus bots is something that we've already seen Tesla doing pretty frequently, and this job will become even more critical as the training of the robot's neural network is expanded into more real-world tasks, while teleoperation of driverless cars is something new to Tesla. Google-owned Waymo has been doing this with their self-driving fleet for a long time. When a car sends a stuck signal to headquarters, someone will be there to help fix the problem. Cruise self-driving taxis, on the other hand, were known for not doing this, which led to huge traffic jams of stuck vehicles that blocked roads and made the company look like a joke, which is probably something that Tesla wants to avoid here. Speaking of cybercabs, our European correspondent Jan just went to London to get a close look at the new prototype. The prototype can be found in the Tesla showroom at the Westfield Mall. Thank you, Jan, for sending back this exclusive high-quality video. The first thing Jan noticed was how eye-catching the Cybercab design is. Not just die-hard EV fans, but also regular people walking by the Tesla store were stopping to do a double-take and walking back to check out the new car. According to Jan, the car looks even better in real life. The gold paint is beautiful, and the design is sleek. You can tell that a lot of thought went into the aerodynamics of the car right away. As for the exclusive new details he found on his trip, he didn't find any. The Cybercab is notorious for deleting everything it could, so there aren't many new details to find. Instead, it's more about what's missing. The model in the showroom had wider plastic caps on the wheels instead of the painted wheels we saw at the RoboTaxi event. These are what the Cybercab rims look like. The Tesla UK team tried to let Jan sit inside the Cybercab, but the lines got too long to handle. This is more proof that this is a very popular car, even outside of the USA. Remember those so-called environmentalist hippie protesters who lived in the forest next to the Tesla Giga Buren factory? Members of the protest damaged Tesla equipment at least once earlier this year, and a large group of them tried to break through the factory gates, but were beaten and pepper sprayed by German police. After almost nine months of occupation, those same police finally took down the protest camp near Giga Berlin. The activists who were against the factory's expansion because they were worried about the environment had built tree houses and other structures in the forest next to the facility. After clearing out the site, authorities were left to clean it up, which was full of trash, including paint cans, batteries, plastic tarps, and buckets full of human waste. A police officer said it looked like a hazardous waste dump so I don't have to say how ironic that is. This protest is part of a larger movement against Tesla's plans to build a goods station and storage areas as part of its plans to grow its Berlin factory. Despite the protests, activists are still worried that the expansion will lead to more water use and tree loss. Tesla is still moving forward with its plans to expand its production capacity and infrastructure at the Berlin site. The company has not said anything about the recent clearing of the protest camp. Rivian, an American company that makes electric vehicles, 
has just admitted that it stole Tesla's battery secrets. Tesla and Rivian are close to ending a lawsuit that started in 2020, in which Tesla accused Rivian of hiring its employees to steal trade secrets, especially those related to battery technology. Now, Tesla recently told a judge in California that they've reached a conditional settlement and plan to dismiss the case by December 24th, as long as the agreed terms are met. The specifics of the settlement haven't been made public, and neither company has said anything about it. However, since Rivan is the defendant in this case, and Tesla has a lot more resources to fight a legal battle than the small startup, it's likely that Rivan admitted some wrongdoing and agreed to pay a sum of money that would end the whole thing. In their lawsuit, Tesla said that Riven had an alarming history of stealing intellectual property and workers for almost five years. Tesla also found up to six employees who may have taken very private information with them when they went to work for Riven. This lawsuit is part of Tesla's larger 2019 effort to protect its proprietary information. Tesla sued Chinese electric vehicle maker Zong Motors, saying that a former worker stole code linked to autopilot. That case was also settled in 2021, with the suspect paying money and no specifics being made public. Also, in June, the unknown person known as Claus Fluck admitted to stealing Tesla's manufacturing secrets in order to sell them to Chinese competitors. He is now facing up to 10 years in jail. A starship. We got great news from our old friends at the Federal Aviation Administration. They just released an updated environmental assessment for Starbase Texas that would allow more launches and landings each year. The assessment looked at the effects of up to 25 launches and 25 landings of the Super Heavy Booster and Starship upper stages each year. It looks like good news, but nothing is official yet. The FAA says that the public comment time for the updated draft starts with its release and ends on January 17th. There will be five public meetings to get feedback. In early January, there were four events in Texas that people could attend in person. And on January 13th, there was one event that people could attend online. This should work out perfectly with the next Starship launch, Flight 7. Right now, January 11th is the only date that's being rumored to not include a Starship catch. Elon Musk says that if they can do another controlled water landing, Flight 8 could be the first return to launch site from orbit. Elon Musk recently talked about a big step forward made by the Boring Company. Their Proof Rock 3 tunnel boring machines can now start digging tunnels without having to do any of the time-consuming site preparation work that is usually needed for underground tunneling. They can just pull up with their equipment and dive right in. This new technology is made possible by a system called Monster. Monster is a huge mobile platform that sends and receives tunnel boring machines, allowing for rapid excavation in almost any site location. We saw the Monster take Rock 3 out of the construction site of the new Giga Texas Southern Expansion and then it drove off with the boring machine on its way to the next job. This is part of the boring company's ongoing efforts to speed up tunnel construction with their upcoming tunnel boring machine. The proof Rock 4 is meant to tunnel faster and better than earlier models. Testing for the proof. Rock 4 began in August 2024 in Texas, and it can now produce up to 4.7 million pounds of thrust. These improvements are meant to cut down on the time and money needed to build tunnels, which could make underground transportation systems more practical in cities. Tesla has brought its actually smart summon feature to Europe and the Middle East, letting owners move their cars from afar using the Tesla app. However, because of local laws, the feature isn't as flexible as it is in the US. In these areas, users must stay within six meters or 20 feet of their car while using it, which is a rule set by the UN Economic Commission for Europe. In the US, 
users can use Actually Smart Summon from up to 2,113 feet, or 65 miles away. The stricter European limits have made some users see the feature as more of a novelty than a useful tool. Even with these problems, the launch of Smart Call in Europe and the Middle East is a positive step towards Tesla's goal of making its self-driving features available all over the world. The company is still working with regulators to see if these problems can be solved in the future.